Hey there, I am here with Inan, the engine programmer here at Hype Hype. How you doing, Inan? Pretty good. Good man, Thank good you. man. We're, we're here quickly. Uh, we won't take long today. We're just here to go through some of the Unity to Hype Hype stuff. Uh, you'll find most of the information on this page, but I thought it'd be good just to grab Inan while I'm here in Helsinki, which is great to be here, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so let's go through some of the issues that we might find or people might find coming from Unity uh, moving over to Hype Hype. So we're going to run down the uh, the page sort of titles here. And the first thing we've got is game and project files. So the main right. differences. Right. So, um, yeah, there's a not huge difference, but in the sense that in the Unity and other engines, we are kind of used to having this uh, resources panel, the content browser, having these game and project files live on the disk we have and like have some sort of a view into our, sure. our, our our PC in that sense. In high pipe, things do not work exactly like that. We don't have resources panels specifically dedicated to that or, or any kind of content browser, but all your resources and game files and textures and this and that are basically stored in your Hypes binary. It's stored in our servers, and we have different kind of panels for each specific type of resource. You have an asset browser where you can browse your assets. Uh, you have the PixArt panel where you can browse your textures. You have a specific builder panel for your prefabs, etc. So rather like having a single panel, it's divided into these multiple uh, different panels we have in Hypipe. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's a bit unusual not to have your own sort of project folder yep. or project yep. file, isn't it? And I think that's really important to mention. Um, we've listed out the terminology here. Um, mm -hmm. Can you go through each one slightly? Because when we were putting this page together, you were you expanded on this so much, and I thought this is why I wanted you here today. Yep. Um, some of them are quite explanatory uh, or self-explanatory, but some of them have got some little nuances to them. So if we go down the terminology here, obviously you've got the, uh, the Unity version is the inspector. Mm -hmm. uh, our version would be the, the details panel. panel. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty much the same in this case. In this case, there's not much to say, to be honest. Uh, it's a simple panel to inspect any kind of properties that uh, an object has. So in that sense, it's pretty much the same. And uh, Do you want me to go over the next? Yeah, or? I think if you yeah, run down, then that'd be fab. Yeah. All thanks. right. So uh, the prefab uh, in Unity, well, pretty much the same again. We have reusables in Hypeup that you can create from the objects in the scene, and you can save them, and then you can reuse them in uh, different manners. And the game view, we have playtest. So in Unity, we are kind of used to have this different kind of game view versus just scene view. We, you can use them as different panels. But in Hypipe, we do not have that, mostly due to being a mobile first uh, editor and engine and all that environment differences. But we simply have an editor playtest that is super fast to get into the play mode and see what's happening in your game and then go out back to the editor. And components, well, we have behaviors which works exactly the same, almost exactly the same. You can create behaviors out of different nodes, which we can touch up later. Uh, but the idea is that you define some sort of input properties, and then those input properties are exposed in the details for a panel for, for your behaviors, similar to writing a script, script and using it as a component in Unity. And hierarchy panel, we have hierarchy in Hypipe, which works exactly the same, uh, I would say, our hierarchy panel is a bit more detailed, where you can like uh, see different kind of nodes and different kind of uh, different kind of functionality of those nodes. Search for different kind of filters, but pretty much the idea is the same: to find stuff in your scene. And we have the console in Unity, which we uh, in Hypipe in turn we have something called uh, playtest log, where you can log details of your of your runtime behaviors in in some sort of a log panel. So. Yeah, and you can see that on the screen as well, can't you? You yep. can have that so it's visible as your as your playtest. Yes, stuff. exactly. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, I actually understand that one amazingly. Um, that's awesome. So, assets and objects. Uh, let's touch on that real quick. Right. So, yeah, we have lots of different kind of assets, but the idea is that asset browser is super crucial in high pipe to use. Uh, that is a huge difference to Unity, where you are used to more using like offline assets and putting them into your project and then reusing them, etc. But uh, in Hypipe, we have an asset browser where you can find basically everything, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, basically all the sounds, all the effects, all the models, prefabs, um, like reusables and all kinds of stuff. You can find them there. And uh, basically, 
similar to Unity, we have objects as well. And when you drag and drop an asset into the scene, different kind of objects for that particular asset is created, and you manage them pretty much, the, almost pretty much the same as you would do them in Unity. Yeah, and you can import your own as well. It's um, mostly on the desktop version, I think, at the moment, at yeah. the time of we're recording this. Uh, but you can, of course, import your own assets. Yes, exactly. You can import your models, audio, textures, and other kind of assets into yeah. high pipe through our asset pipeline. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I think getting towards some of the bigger ones really here for me, which I found... Uh, not necessarily coming from Unity, but understanding that the way that works a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about reusables and then move on to the behavior side of things. Yeah, uh, so first reusables and behaviors. Well, reusables are basically containers. In HiPy, what we call, well, we, we have something what we call con container where you can create different, uh, you can join different objects in your scene in HiPipe and different nodes, different everything, and then you can group them together and then name them as like put them inside a container. And then you can make these containers as reusables, which is exactly the equivalent of dragging a couple of like selecting a couple of objects in uh, in Unity's hierarchy panel and dragging them to your project folder, which automatically creates the prefab for those objects. So uh, you can you can create reusables uh, pretty much like that. Nice. Yeah. And behaviors, well, behaviors are exactly, like, not 100% exactly, but I would say pretty much uh, the equivalent of components in Unity. Uh, the, the main difference being here is that behaviors are created from high pipe nodes. Now, these nodes range from very trivial operations like uh, mat operations mm -hmm. all the way to very complex operations like a whole camera behavior. So a single node can be uh, an equivalent of a single line of code or an equ equivalent of a whole component in Unity. But the idea is that we like to say that if you're coming from Unity, components are behaviors where you can uh, create behaviors from very little tiny subcomponents. So that makes sense. No, it, do, it, yeah. it does. And I know the reason why I thought it was interesting to get you uh, in today and do this is because, as we were, like I said, as we wrote the, the stuff for the page, you uh, it's a, I think it's easier to understand when you're explaining it like that, certainly mm. for me as well. Uh, we're yeah. nearly towards, um, I guess, towards the main differences in the crucial parts of to get people unstuck when they're moving from Unity to High Pipe. Yep. I guess we just touched on the nodes a little bit. Um, there's plenty of different types. There's, uh, you know, math and there's all sorts. They're kind of like the building blocks of the code. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, as I would say that uh, they are building blocks. They are very atomic pieces, but they can be very huge and complex behaviors on their own as well. Right. They're, like it's really super hard to make a one-to-one -one relations in this in this case. But if we have to make that one-to-one -one relationship, we could say that it's like visual scripting. So high pipe, you of course create your logic with visual scripting. So you can think it of uh, visual scripting nodes in, uh, in in Unity's different kind of visual scripting assets that you you can have one node do a very trivial job, or you can do uh, have one node that does a whole whole huge game mechanic on itself. Right. So it's it's really hard to put as one to one relationship. But once you get to use it, it becomes super clear the whole idea that uh, you want to create multiple behaviors and you want to drive your game logic with those behaviors. And the way to do that is to use all the available nodes we have. Got yeah. Yeah. So I kind of uh, I had to play around with stuff like uh, Playmaker, which I think is probably the most mm -hmm. popular visual yeah, scripting. Old in as you. Old, yeah. yeah, exactly. And uh, it's it's not dissimilar to that in the way that no, works. No, no. Yeah. Okay, got ya. All right, and I guess the main the main one now is the camera because Unity's got some great third party tools and stuff to really take control of the camera. Right. Let's just go over the core differences between the two. Um, yeah. from Unity to Hype, right? Yeah, um, before the core differences, I would say the the same part, you know, the similarities, it's a game camera. <laughs> I mean, you put it in sure. your, yeah, you put put it in your scene and then you can enable the camera, you can disable the camera and you can all do all sorts of things to make camera switches. But the 
actual actual difference would be in high pipe the way, way it works is that you just toggle the camera on and when you toggle the camera on it automatically makes it the pri priority camera depending on which unity version you're using you have like different kind of logics to disable and enable the camera you don't have to uh, keep track of all your cameras and disable all the ones and just enable one of them etc as you would do in uh, Unity in high pipe, you just activate the camera and it just becomes the active camera. And if you want to switch it, you activate another camera. You don't have to like deactivate or go through those kind of loops uh, in high pipe. And one of the other biggest differences we have is that we have some built-in functionalities for. We basically have a camera target in high pipe that you can select any object as a target for the camera, and then you can create different kind of following behaviors or uh, like look at behaviors, follow behaviors with all kinds of limitations on how the rotations would work and how the movement will work, uh, whether the camera will be like limited uh, in a certain certain game world area, etc. You have all of these functionalities built into high pipe camera in, Uni uh, in high pipe. <laughs> so in, in comparison to Unity, that's right. like the biggest thing I would say. Nice. Yeah. The last thing, I guess, I thought the camera was kind of the last thing, but uh, I think while we're here, let's have a quick touch on the timeline and animations. Right. Um, we have a little bit of literature on the page here, but uh, can you talk a little bit about that and how that would apply to building in high pipe rather yeah. than Unity? All right. So uh, we have a timeline editor just like you would have in, in Unity. The idea is that to be able to interpolate uh, the values of certain things to create animations. But the biggest difference is, so in Unity you have a timeline, uh, I'm not talking about Cinemachine or the like extended other, other third party tool, not third party, but other tools that Unity sure. provides. Uh, but I'm talking about the role timeline that you would have, that we had for like t uh, 20, 20 years in Unity. Uh, so you have a timeline, you create some animations and those animations are tied one to one with the objects that you have. You can like drag and drop a cube there and then you can make some moves on, a, on, the, on that cube and now that you will have a slot uh, of animation for that particular cube. In high pipe, we have uh, the uh, like a cinematic tracks. It works pretty much in a similar way, but we have a distinct uh, separation of data and the runtime objects. So you create what we call tracks. Now, while creating a track, you can create multiple properties for that track. Like a, I want to interpolate a value, a number. I want to interpolate a color. I want to interpolate an object. I want to interpolate a uh, I don't know, a vector or, or animation or events. Like you create different properties on that and then you animate it using our editor. And after that, now that data lives in your hype, lives in your uh, project forever. And it's not tied to any object or any value or anything at all. Okay. Like it's not tied to your scene. You can delete everything in your scene, but you will still have that data there. Right. Uh, what you can do then is you can use this node we have called Timeline Player. You select that particular track that you recorded, and then all the data that you have recorded there uh, becomes exposed on the details panel. It's like, hey, you have three object slots that you recorded. Now I expose those three object slots, and now you can attach that to any object you want. You can change that dynamically as well. And you can apply those uh, animations as local or as global or absolute transformer like different kind of properties. So that's the biggest different, uh, like the difference that you would have in the Unity timeline. It's not tied to the scene directly one-to-one. -one. It's more like you animate slots and then you fill those slots in runtime with actual data. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. I think that's going to wrap it up. We wanted to aim real short and sweet on this one. I right, thought right. it was super interesting to get you in, try and explain something. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do go and head over to the Discord and ask away in there and uh, we'll get those answers for you shortly. <laughs>